الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتى باليقين اللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جزيت به نبيا من قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمدنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم أمين We all almost read Surah Al-Kahf every Friday and we read the example Allah Subhanahu has given to liken this life saying إنما مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح هاشيما تذروه الرياح فاختلط به نبات الأرض ثم أصبح هاشيما تذروه الرياح The example of this life is like that of a water that came from heaven and it got mixed with the plants of the earth then it grows it becomes green and after becoming green tall and strong produces whatever Allah designated it to produce then it turns yellow and then it cracks and breaks down into small pieces then it gets thrown in the air by the wind so what is it that Allah is really likening or comparing or giving example to this life this life is where every human is competing for something we're competing for risk we're competing for love we're competing for positions we're competing for higher positions, we're competing for limelight, for fame, for power, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives everybody whatever he has designated, whether the person is a Muslim or non-Muslim. It is true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives everyone from his bounties and his bounties are unlimited inna hadha la rizquna ma lahu min nafad this is our provision it never ends unendless cannot finish every day there is something new coming and every day man is given new capabilities we didn't know the genes right just a few decades ago, there was nothing known as genes. Then came the studies of genetics. Then came the study of the genome project where man was able to draw those billions of genomes in his own body. That's huge, yes. But because Allah is giving us the example, that this life is like a plant that is nothing without water. Where does water come from? From heaven. So in Surah Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ رِزْقًا We have sent down unto you rizqa. What does come from heaven? It's water. Without water, there is no life. That's why we are on Mars or some 
machine is running the Mars rover is on Mars searching for residual of bacterial life to show that sometime in the past million, billion years there was something living here. It's amazing. We are reaching all of this knowledge today and the more man knows, the more arrogant man becomes. The more Allah provides us with knowledge and power, the more destructive we turn. The more Allah expands our dominion and ability to control, the more abusive we become of His power. It's like a horse running out of leash. How do you catch that horse back to your control? For Allah's case, Allah can do anything to cripple any of His creatures. But He's merciful, He's kind. He sends His messengers and His soldiers against those who are running amok and those who are being abused we know why those who are running amok should be put on leash but why are the others those poor and helpless nations that are living somewhat in faith it is because they are not doing their job we let the wrongdoers get away with the wrongdoing and we even clap for them. We encourage them. And the Prophet وسلم, knowing that this life is short, he made it part of our mission. Some scholars call it the sixth pillar of Islam, to enjoy the good and to forbid the evil. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ What is نَهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ We know in joining the good, to command everybody to do their best. But when we try to stop somebody from doing what is wrong, even if he is a Muslim, even if he is your son or daughter or father or mother, what we're doing is, we are putting a leash so that they don't run amok. We are helping them recognize that there is power beyond their own. And that power is not really necessarily the physical power, but the power of truth. Because al-ma'roof is truth. Al-munkar is falsehood. And as Muslims, we are being swept like the wrong doors exactly because number one we are our own wrong doors in our own right because we are imitating everybody in every way but we're not just catching up and Allah SWT says وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ if Allah were to expend all the bounties for his servants, they would become tyrants. They would be committing aggression. And we see it every day. So why aren't Muslims committing aggressions? It is because they don't have the means. Not because they are Muslims. Because where they have control, they are committing aggression against each other and against others. So we need to understand that when Allah told us that this life is like a cycle of a plant, that water comes, gives it life, green, and it makes it grow, that one day this water will run out of the plant in due time and the green plant will turn yellow then will turn purple then will turn 
into broken small pieces. We see every fall the tree leaves filling the streets around us. We see this cycle. And beyond that, we see each other going to the graves. We see the janazah. We see people around us dying, young and old, healthy and sick. And we don't pay attention to this cycle. It will one day catch up with us. So instead of turning tyrants and wrongdoers, we should turn humble. We should become humbled by the power of Allah, by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the most vivid picture that people pay attention to is zulm that is coming from others. But this should never blind us from our own wrongdoing. Our own wrongdoing even to our own families, to our own neighbors, to our own uh, compatriots, those who are living around us as citizens of this society and this nation. So it is not wise to let the shaitan teach us the lessons of power and the lessons of capability. The more we become powerful, the more humble we should be. It is like what Bertrand Russell said. He said, the more I know, the more I know how much I don't know. The more I know, I discover how much I don't know. In other words, to make it simple, this is what he's saying. If my knowledge is a circle, let's say it's this circle in my hand, then I know more the circle is bigger, right? Through the smaller circle, outside of the circle is our ignorance. Inside the circle is our knowledge. So that surface, the circumference of the cycle, the circle, this circumference is our access to know how much we don't know. When that circumference gets bigger, we discover the bigger world around us that we don't know. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Human arrogance and human journey could come as a, res as a result of the sense of feeling very knowledgeable. We know so much. We have scientists that can plan a machine to go all the way to Mars. And maybe in a few years they are able to go to Pluto and Newton and other places. The trip is endless. Right? And Fudu. Penetrate the horizons of heavens and earth. We have not yet finished discovering the earth, let alone the oceans, let alone the heavens and the skies. And the more we discover, the more arrogant and the more tyrant we become. So, tyranny comes as a result of knowledge. It also can come as a result of power. And power is a gift from Allah like everything else. وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And those days we do recycle amongst communities and nations. Those who were up on the top 50 years ago, where are they? Where are they? They are down the wheel now. Maybe they are getting there. Muslims controlled the world almost as the only superpower, if you want to call it that, for hundreds of years. Then we started to commit wrongdoings among us ourselves and against others. So Allah replaces us. The wheel of power keeps turning. And anybody who's, who's holding to one side thinking he is there, one day they come down. So the more we become powerful, the more humble we should be. Because power doesn't last. 
Health doesn't last. Money doesn't last. Even enemies and friends do not last. So we should be very, very humble. And we should look at the cycle of nature around us to take heed that the power of Allah is the only lasting power. The gifts of Allah can come and go. Our power can come and go. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ إِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ If you are afflicted with anything harmful, like the pandemic we're going through, فَإِلَيْهِ تَجْأَرُونَ When you are afflicted, you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us humility with all of his gifts and make us just and fair with each other, with our families and with everyone else. Amen. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد Brothers and sisters We attend a lot of جمعه We hear lots of خطب And many, many of us who are using social media You get a lot of advice running into your inbox or you are exposed to it on other medias that you search. But our situation is not improving. And I'm not pointing to a specific person or us, us physically here. I'm talking about Muslims in general. We need to improve. So here is a hadith I want to leave you with. The hadith says, Man kana يومه كغده فهو مغبون Anyone who has his today is the same as his tomorrow he is wronging himself ومن كان غده شرا من يومه فهو ملعون Anyone whose tomorrow is worse it doesn't mean that he has less money. That's not what the Prophet is talking about. He's talking about our hasanat, our good deeds, and our bad deeds. Our improving versus our disproving or disimproving that you go down. Anyone whose tomorrow is worse, is worse off tomorrow than he is today. That means he is malhoon, he is cursed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us mercy, not wrath. Inshallah, this coming Sunday, there is a testing program offered here at Dar al-Hijra for COVID. If you or anyone in your family has reason to be tested, which you can check the signs on our website or on CDC, uh, if you have fever, if you have cough, if you have any of the symptoms that we know of the pandemic, the COVID-19, then you need to be tested. The test will be offered here for the uninsured, it will be free. Uh, for the insured, it will be free. And for those who don't have insurance, it's going to be $120. This is a cooperation between Dar al-Hijra and the county. And we want everybody to benefit from this opportunity. If we do not get 50 people, there will be no uh, testing. So we need 50 people to sign. So make a call, see who you know in your friends and family, and tell them so that everybody will benefit from this opportunity, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aatayt. وقنا وصرف عنا شر ما قضيت 
اللهم اغسل لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنة ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء والوباء والمحن وسائر الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم لا تدع لنا في يومنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا سائلا إلا أعطيته ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرته اللهم انصر عبادك المظلومين في كل مكان أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة